Hey everyone, Michael from Xano here. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to uh, be doing sort of a combo tutorial uh, where I'll be working with an external API request um, and also showing off our new response caching, uh, which is powered by Redis. Uh, so you'll get to kind of see uh, both things, which um, is a very real use case. Um, let's face it, most applications work with third-party services or external APIs. And um, you know sometimes we are hitting external APIs with large payloads um, that might not be changing a lot. And because it's a large payload, maybe the response time isn't the best. Um, so we can implement data caching or response caching in this case uh, in order to really speed up those response times because we're storing that data uh, on memory. So. Um, today I'm going to be working with um, this Star Wars API, and you can find it at uh, swapi.dev. Um, it's just kind of a fun one. It has different things like people, uh, planets, movies, uh, etc. in uh, the Star Wars galaxy. So um, I'm going to be working with um, the planet one. Um, as you can see here, it gives me this base URL, and then I can do slash planets. Um, to get all the planets. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Um, so you'll, you'll notice here, it'll say, uh, need a hint, you can do planet slash and then this ID number. Um, I'm going to build this API so it can actually uh, search uh, based on the name of the planet. So for example, if I click this, you'll see that um, this URL is planet slash three, but Three is nowhere to be seen in the data. We don't actually have that ID. So I want to be able to actually search on uh, the name of our Star Wars planets. Um, so I'm going to build that. And because we're hitting this external API, you know, maybe um, it takes a second to uh, call that API. So I'm going to implement response caching once I uh, complete this uh, to even make those response times even quicker. So. Uh, first, I'm going to jump to uh, my functions, and I'm going to create a this API endpoint in a custom function. So we'll just call this um, maybe Star Wars Planets for this custom function. Uh, in my function stack, I'm going to open it up and go to my external API request. Um, and I'm going to paste that base URL in and then say uh, planets here. And luckily with this Star Wars API, we know there's really no other parameters. It's a pretty simple, straightforward one. So we don't have to actually um, add in any parameters with the set filter or any headers with the push filter. The method is a get. So I can just go ahead and save that. Um, so you'll notice here, I'll go ahead and run this. And naturally, it takes a second. Um, and you can see we get this big payload back, right? Um, so we have request, um, then our response. Looks like we have headers in here, result, and then results. And it looks like this uh, right here is actually the data I want, this object array of each planet. Um, so that's kind of the data I want to work with. And how I can uh, parse through this data in Xano very easily, I can copy the result as JSON right here. And I'll go to add a new function stack item. I'll go to data manipulation and hit create variable. And I'm just going to call this uh, results here. And the value, I can hit our drop down here. And on the uh, variable created from this API response, I can go ahead and select the sub path here. And then I can paste in those results and hit define. And this lets me visually traverse through uh, the data so I can get to exactly where I need to go. So I can open response, then result. And results right here is my object array of all my planets. So I can go ahead and just simply select results. And Xana will automatically pop the, populate the correct dot notation for me. So I go ahead and hit save. And let's change the response to results so it's nice and clean. Um, now when I just go ahead and run this, once again, see, it might take a second. But we get this nice, clean uh, object array with all of our Star Wars planets. Um, so now that I've built this, the next step, remember, is I want to be able to search these results uh, by the name of the planet. So I'm only getting a single planet back. So I am actually um, want this to be like an API endpoint. So imagine on my front end, my user 
uh, inputs a planet name, and they get all the details for that Star Wars planet instead of this big list, right? And I want to search by the name, remember, because we don't know the ID of each planet. It's not in the payload. So let's jump to the API. I'm going to uh, just create a new API endpoint here, start from scratch, and I'll just call this get planet. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do in the function stack um, where custom functions is, I'm going to insert that function I just created with the Star Wars planets. And we'll just call this um, Star Wars planets. I'll go ahead and hit save. And let me just change that response. So once again, now, as you can see, when I run this, uh, we'll get our Star Wars planets back. So next, I want to be able to actually search and just return a single planet based on the name. So first, I'm going to add a uh, text input just called name. Uh, next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back into the function stack. I'm going to go to data manipulation. And under arrays, we have all these really great and powerful functions that a lot of times um, takes some of the complexities a way of needing to know how to loop through things um, and hides it all in this single function. So uh, for example, um, in this case, I'm going to use this find first element, which is going to find the first matched element and return that element of the array. So normally you'd have to go ahead and loop through this, but uh, these functions are super powerful uh, and very useful when dealing with arrays. So. Uh, find first element. So I'll find the first element matching the custom expression. The array is going to be this Star Wars planets. Remember, that's the object array of all those planets and all their data. Um, and notice it now it says the dollar sign this variable is available within this expression builder, which is where we'll define something. And it represents each iteration of the array. So that's where that abstraction of the uh, loop is coming in. So now when I go ahead and define I'll select that this variable, and that basically um, takes place of that Star Wars planet object array um, because we're doing it for each iteration. Um, and I can use dot notation on this to drill down to the name. And I'll just make sure that that is equal to my input of name here. And I'll go ahead and save that. And what we'll return, we'll return uh, the planet. So I'll go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and change the response here to planet. So now, for example, if I want to search uh, Tatooine, make sure I'm in between those uh, quotation marks here. And I have one extra. Uh, now, when I go ahead and run that, what will we get back? One single planet, Tatooine. Um, I'll show you that again. We'll do Alderaan. And once again, we get one single planet. So that's a pretty cool way how you can uh, just manipulate um, the data from external sources to get it exactly how we want it or even transform it. Um, but yeah, once again, let's notice that uh, when I go ahead and run this, well, it takes a couple seconds, right? Um, and maybe that's not a big deal, but oftentimes we might be working with uh, even bigger payloads where it might take more than a second. What can we do? Uh, we can implement response caching powered by Redis. So if I want to jump back to um, the function here, well, first, I just want to note that response caching is available both on API endpoints and functions. Since I have this API call here in the function, um, I'll jump to the function. And when I open the menu here in the settings, um, I can right here enable uh, response caching if I'm on uh, one of the dedicated resource plans. And you can see there are some different settings that we can uh, manipulate here, which you can read more about in our documentation or on the actual tutorial uh, video. But um, real quick, before I enable this, let's actually run this API endpoint in Swagger because um, it is a great way to sort of mimic just your live API endpoint in the documentation. Um, so for example, if I try this API endpoint out and I just input Tatooine. So we'll execute this and you can see that took a second, right? Um, so we'll just do that again and just took a second. So let's go ahead and on that function, let's actually enable that response time, that response caching. 
So we'll enable this. I'll hit save. This function is now saved. Uh, now the first time we do this, um, already a lot quicker. Um, you can see that response time is pretty much uh, instantaneous. And uh, we can look in um, just the Swagger documentation. I'm sorry. So if you do do the, your data caching on the API level, um, so just on the API, um, you'll see in the headers, there will be a, a response header for the cache value of one, meaning the data is cached. But since it's on the function level, um, that's not in the API documentation because it's uh, hidden, remember? So uh, with that, I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful. Uh, many times you'll be uh, working with uh, external API or data, and this is a really interesting way where you can uh, manipulate it in a way that makes sense to transform the data in the way that you want it. Um, additionally, if you're working with very large payloads and you might be experiencing a little bit of a slower response time, um, then data cat or response caching, I should say, uh, can really speed things up, especially if that payload isn't changing much. Um, having that data stored on uh, memory for instant retrieval is very useful. So if you like this video, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, like the video, and uh, share it with anyone who might uh, might be helpful for. And thank you for watching.